Salam alaikum. This presentation is on Barrow's Triangles, a fundamental part of reconstruction surgery in general and facial surgery in particular. We aim to go through the uh, concepts, the measures, the angles, the variance, and the alternatives. When a flap is mobilized to fill up a surgical defect, there would always be a discrepancy in the length of the two sides of the wound. The length of the adjacent tissues to which the flap will be sutured will always be longer than the length of the flap itself because it's formed of the length of the flap plus the length of the defect. And because of this discrepancy in the length of the two sides of the wound, there will be some redundant tissue and it's inevitable to have a dog ear deformity along the uh, longer side of the wound. Barrow's triangles were designed and developed to sort out this problem. They are triangles of full thickness skin and subcutaneous tissues that would have to be excised in order to equalize the length of the flap to the length of the adjacent tissue to which it's sutured. Barrow's triangles are important because it's an integral step in reconstruction surgery using flaps. In this presentation, I aim to go through the planning of the Barrow's triangles, including its dimensions, the angles, and its position in the wound. I'll uh, go through the variance with uh, advancement flaps, rotation flaps, or A to T plasty, and uh, touch on the alternatives, including east to west plasty, V to Y plasty, and Z plasty. Featuring of this wound, the two sides of the wound should be fairly symmetrical, and the intervening angle should be narrow, less than 30 degrees. If these conditions are not met, then there would be redundant tissue on the longer side of the wound, and that can lead to the trap door or the dog ear deformity. Uh, this is to illustrate what is going to happen when we approximate the wound lips together. There would be redundancy on the longer side, that's the trap door deformity, and that will have to be excised to equalize the length of the wound lips. The easiest way of sorting this out is to extend the shorter uh, lip along an angle of 45 to 60 degrees and a triangle is going to be formed on, along the longer lip and that triangle should go and when it is excised now you have an equal sized uh, wound edges and an angle of less than 30 degrees that's very comparable to the classic elliptical sides of the wound. After excision of a lesion together with its safety margins that may take the shape of a circle, a square or a triangle, the configuration of the wound will have to be changed into a fusiform um, uh, configuration in order to ease the primary closure with no tension and no um, dog ear deformity. But that would entail excising of two opposing triangles of normal skin on either sides of the primary defect. Now these two triangles don't have always to be opposing directly. You can actually excise one triangular piece at this level and excise another triangular piece at a different level where you have more lax tissues or where the scar can be hidden easily. And still you can close up the wound primarily with no tension and no dog ear deformity just by sliding the tissues up and, and down to meet in a good approximation. In this example, you can have the triangular piece, one triangular piece above the uh, defect and two smaller triangular pieces that equate to another piece of skin that can be removed on the other side of the wound and again this A, -T -A to T plus T closes well. The other alternative is rather than removing two 
a triangular pieces on the sides of the defect, you can slide an advancement flap to fill up this defect with no excision of skin here, uh, rather skin of barrel triangles at the base of the defect where it can be hidden more easily. So these are different forms of uh, barrel triangles that you can use um, in order to uh, facilitate primary closure of the wound with no dog ear deformity and no tension. Various triangles can take different uh, forms. The uh, most common form is Barrow's triangle with um, equilateral triangles on each side of the base of the defect. The side of the triangle will be half the size of the defect. So if the side of the defect is two X's, this will be just an X. But that takes other forms as well. Uh, so it's not necessarily an equilateral triangle, it can be a right angle triangle. And these two adjacent sides should be sutured together without too much difficulty. You can also have a more obtuse angle, like you can start the uh, Barrow's triangle outside the uh, base of the defect. And the angles of the defect can now be pointing towards the flap rather than away from it. Or you can have barrel triangles pointing towards different directions as well. Barrel triangles are designed like equilateral triangle with 60 degrees each and sides of the triangle would be half the size of the defect. So if the side of the defect is 2x, the side of the Barrow's triangle will be an X. When we are planning an advancement flap, this is the usual position of the Barrow's triangles toward the base of the flap. Again, the dimension is half the dimension of the defect and the triangle is equilateral. And once undermining is finished, the flap can now be mobilized to fill up the defect and the two sides of the triangle, which is equilateral, would close up well. You would need a three point suture stitch to get the apex of uh, this point into uh, the base of the triangle. And if using a rotation flap rather than an advancement flap, again, the Barrow's triangle can be designed to fit into the base of the flap and uh, in the usual configuration of an equilateral triangle with a side of the triangle equal half the size of the base of the defect. I'm using an A to T plasty to excise a triangular uh, lesion. The Barrow's triangles can be designed as two small equilateral triangles on the opposite side of the lesion. Once the lesion itself is removed together with the Barrow's triangles, then um, the flaps can be mobilized easier and uh, these two small incisions would heal well and you've caused minimal disturbance to uh, this straight line that can be an eyebrow or a hairline or a lip line. One other variant of Barrow's triangles, the east and west plasty used for triangular excisions on the side of the nose. You can have the Burroughs triangle pointing to the other direction of the triangular excision. That's why they are called east-west because they point to different directions. Once the lesion is removed and the Burroughs triangle excised, then the flaps can be mobilized easy. And now you have your uh, incisions all lying in relaxed skin tension lines like the nasolabial flap or the side of the nose. We now move to 
uh, Barrow's triangles alternatives rather than variants. And one good alternative to Barrow's triangles is the V to Y plus T. This is a tissue sparing technique. Rather than excising two triangular pieces of skin on either side of the defect, you would actually want to preserve that triangular piece of the skin rather than discard with it. Once it is incised from the size, that it's kept pedicled on the subcutaneous tissue. So now the lesion is removed and this triangular piece of skin is freed from the sides and it's still pedicled on its base to the subcutaneous tissues. And it can be mobilized based on this to fill up the uh, defect either completely or partially. Now that you have the wound in a V-shaped uh, configuration, it can be changed to a Y configuration and closes well. Another alternative to Barrow's triangles, if uh, all the tissues here needed to be preserved and you don't want to discard with the Barrow's triangles, is to use Z plasters at the base of the flap rather than excising these uh, skin triangles and discard of them. So rather than having Barrow's triangles here towards the base of the flap, you would actually plan a Z plus D and the tri two triangles will be transposed to add more length to the flap rather than excising any tissues if that is crucially important like you are working in um, the lips or the eyelids or in the mid part of the face. Now you would incise these triangles, free them and transpose the triangles and this will add length to the flap. You will uh, discard it of any tissues. One other alternative is to delay the excision of the excess skin towards the end of the closure rather plan it and excise the skin uh, at the beginning. So you actually start the closure and when faced with the dog ear deformity, you can excise the excess tissues by extending the uh, line of the shorter uh, lip of the wound with an angle of 45 to 60 degrees. Now, you can mark the excess tissues on the longer side of the wound, and this excess tissues can be excised in a controlled way. So by this we come to the end of this presentation on Barrow's triangles, the concepts, the variants and the alternatives. Salam alaikum.